We're gonna start with sedimentary rocks really, really quickly because that's the easiest way I think to explain this. Let's say you've got a bunch of sediment, like sand sized sediment that all gets deposited somewhere. Eventually through millions of years of burial, those uh, beds that are horizontally deposited will get lithified and become rock. They'll actually all, uh, because of the burial, you get increased temperature and pressure. And that increased temperature and pressure allows for chemical bonds to form. And well, you can imagine the word bonding. It's bonding those grains together, making a sedimentary rock. So let's say you've got all those sedimentary rocks. They're horizontal and there's all these layers upon layers upon layers. In fact, let me find a picture for you. Stratigraphy. So there's got to be a real picture. Yes, perfect. So we're going to take a look at this. So if you see these here, let's say this one's perfect. This one's just fantastic. These are beautiful sedimentary layers. There might be some volcanic layers in the in the form of ash. Sometimes those really, really, really light gray layers can be uh, volcanic in nature. They might be ash deposits that uh, accumulated very similar in the way in which sediment would accumulate. It's just that it was volcanic in nature rather than um, maybe let's say weathered and eroded from surrounding mountains or something. You get all the sediment it accumulates and it forms rock. And in this case, you see this image here? This isn't just like things pile up in the sky and make a rock. No, they pile up and get buried below our feet. And then later on through tectonics, so big pieces of tectonic plates moving around one, uh, against one another, they then, because of tectonic plate movement, which never, never stops, right? It's always ongoing. We've got this uplift. It somehow exposed all these rocks after they were formed. You've got these layers, right? And maybe they'll be folded. Maybe they'll be a nice swirly looking fold, which has a name, but don't worry about it. Maybe they'll be a nice sharp fold, like a chevron fold. Uh, the names really don't matter. Either way, tectonics can really deform things. Maybe there's a fault that displaces everything from one another. And um, what we do with a Bronton is we find a bed, let's say, let me see if I can find a bed that's kind of tilted or outcropped in a way. Yes, this, this is perfect. Oh, there's some unconformities here, beautiful. Let's take a look at this piece here. Um, thicker, po oh yeah, of course it's thicker. Point. All right, so yes. this is OG geology, at least for the geologic uh, study. Anyway, yeah, good old thicker point. So we've got these beds here that are deposited in an angle. I don't know, maybe like 25 degrees relative to horizontal. You've got these beds here. These are deposited at, well, they weren't deposited at this degree, right? Tectonics shifted these rocks later. So the rocks formed, right? And then uh, the, uh, they, they were tilted by tectonic activity later. And so we've got beds here that have been deformed and tilted to basically vertical. So they're 90 degrees relative to horizontal. Got some over here that look like they might be 90 degrees relative to horizontal. Maybe there's some that are really, really young and that, that are actually horizontal. But regardless, what we use a Brunton for, back to your original question, is to measure the angle at which these beds dip relative to horizontal from zero to 90 degrees. So from zero to 45 degrees, to 60 degrees, to 90 degrees, doesn't matter what it is, our Brunton has a level inside of it, and we can measure the angle of these rocks. Additionally, the other thing we use this for is if you imagine a 360 degree circle, right? A circle is 360 degrees in mathematics. So you have zero degrees at north, you have 90 degrees at east, 180 degrees at south, 270 degrees at west, and then 360 or zero at north. 360 or zero can indicate north. It really doesn't matter which one you use. Yes, exactly, radians. Yes, exactly, I'm so glad people in here like math. Anyway, you don't even have to like math to understand this. You just have to imagine that you're looking at a map and that the compass is also representing that map in 360 degrees, which represent north, south, east, and west. Again, I gave you the degrees to which each are represented by. So what the, what we then do is we look at the outcrop in question. Let's say I'm looking at these rocks here. I wanna know which direction 
overall, that outcrop is directly pointing. Is it, is it north, south, east, west? Is it in between? So I would, I would find an exact degree within radian, well, not radians, but I would find an exact degree from zero to 360 degrees, which direction from north it's pointing. So that's called its strike. The direction in which the bed is pointing is its strike. The angle to which it's dipping relative to horizontal is its dip. So we write it, we write the strike and dip as one figure on a map. So when we map geologic settings, we can get the strike and dip of specific rock types. Uh, not all rock types will allow us to do this, but a lot of them will. And that uh, gives us quite a bit of information. Strike again is the way in which we use a Brunton or a geologic compass to figure out the direction of a piece of rock in which it was deposited, at least where it's lying now, relative to north in 360 degrees. And its dip is, well, the angle in which it's dipping relative to horizontal in 90 degrees. So those indicate to us, well, tectonic changes. And it also indicates to us, well, we're mapping exactly where every piece of rock is. And then anything we can get a strike and dip on, we can also extrapolate into the earth. So if this is dipping at, let's say 45 degrees, 45 degrees, which it's not, it's like 30, maybe 25 degrees. It's pretty shallowly dipping, but let's say it was a little bit higher. Um, that would go into the ground. It's not just at the surface. Those things go into the ground. So it's not just because we want to do it and ha ha, it's fun. No, it allows us to reconstruct tectonics. We can see where things are. We can see how they're deformed underneath our feet. Through mapping so many different points, the more points of data we gather, the more we can understand what's beneath our feet, how it's deformed, what it looks like, how it's folded, and what kind of rock is where. Additionally, not only that, but we get a, a geologic map out of that, a surficial geologic map. So take an aerial map that you're looking at, let's say it has all the roads and everything on it. Well, we can also overlay that with the rock types, surficial rock types. So wherever you are on the earth, on the surface, walking around, la 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 la, you can know which rock type you're on. Is it a specific kind of igneous rock, metamorphic, sedimentary? And then it will give you even more data than that, including fossils, index fossils in some cases. Yeah, uh, striking up is very important in petroleum and mineral exploration because uh, we can figure out where things have been essentially trapped underground based on the rock types and the deformation, uh, the way in which they get folded and deformed because of tectonic underground. We get to visualize that essentially and uh, then determine where minerals, oil, gas, coal can be found and then mined. Yeah. Good night or day. Thank you all my patrons. Thank you all my, my subscribers on Twitch. And thank you for just viewing. Thank you for being here. If you're lurking or viewing, all of you are very important. Go forth and share the science, please. And I will see you very soon. Bye.